Hey, it's Darnell here. I wanted to do a comparison of uh, rendering speeds in PowerDirector. I'm using PowerDirector 15 because if you already have PowerDirector 15 or maybe even an earlier version and you start using this uh, feature, you probably will find less of a need to even upgrade to the new PowerDirector 16, which I'm not even going to upgrade to now that I found this feature. To increase rendering speed so well it's like well no need to move to 16 when this one's working well for me but um, <clears throat> basically the two things that I want to compare for speeding up rendering in PowerDirector 16 are the SVRT option which is uh, Cyberlink who makes PowerDirector their proprietary rendering speed up option and also Intel QuickSync because uh, the Intel QuickSync video option was one that I had as a rendering speed up option. If I go to produce, I'll show you here. I have um, for fast render, fast video rendering technology, SVRT, which I had already set up, and Intel QuickSync video. I'll just say for the Intel QuickSync video option, I tried testing that with this uh, video that I've got here that's a 5 minute 22 second video and with the Intel quick sync video option it took 6 minutes 50 seconds on my Surface Pro 4 and the fan was spinning pretty hard which meant that it was uh, maxing out the CPU and the GPU and all working really hard to get this thing produced well actually it's supposed to max out or work the GPU Pretty hard but it was had to be maxing out the CPU pretty hard because the fan was spinning really loud um, like louder loudest that I hear it when it's working the hardest so uh, was really working that processor the end file size with the Intel video sync was 2.22 gigabytes now I'll just mention what happened when I use SVRT now for comparison when I used SVRT, the rendering speed was just 2 minutes 57 seconds. There was no fan spinning at all. Like, no fan spinning. It was amazing. And the file size was 2.17 gig. So, it rendered in less than half the time using SVRT. No fan spinning, so there wasn't any pressure on the processor. And the file size was a little smaller. Now I want to show how to implement uh, SVRT when you're making a video with PowerDirector. You can right click on a open space in the timeline. You hit show SVRT track. And this shows the SVRT track. Well, basically the whole track, it shows what can and cannot be used SVRT. The red will not use SVRT. The red will just be fully rendered and take time rendering. The green is what SVRT is going to be uh, speeding through. If you look up here, I've already set up a profile. But basically, if you do this yourself on your PowerDirector software, it's just going to show uh, like a default name. I just gave mine the name of my camera. But it's just going to give it a default name. And... You can see the media type, resolution, frame rate, and the workload is what's showing you how much is going to be sped through using SVRT. So over 90% of this video is going to be sped through on SVRT. Um, I'll say the areas where you see red, those are red because I have text embedded in the video here on these text tracks. So everywhere I've got video embedded, it cannot use SVRT. But where I didn't have text embedded, it's basically going to be able to take exactly what I recorded off the camera and just speed right through it for rendering. So I can say when I did a render of a video using SVRT, basically it started, of course, in the red and it was going slowly. And the estimated time for completion was looking like 20 minutes. And it was like, oh, wow, that's... Uh, not looking like a real big speed up there but once it got to the green it just flew I mean it just went all the way through the green 
like super fast and then it got to this red again and it got slow again and so that's why at the end of all of it, it was like two minutes 57 seconds only because of the time mostly spent on the red it, it probably spent maybe not even 30 seconds in all this green because i mean it just shot through it but the red is really what took the time so i'm just going to show you over here when i um did the svrt setup you can click on intelligent svrt and this is where i just uh did a detail of the edits i mean an edit of the details whoops that wasn't it let me go back i must have clicked the edit here no that wasn't what i clicked it was in the SVRT, it was in here. There's a way to, to change the name of this, but I'm not getting that right now. But either way, even if you don't, really regardless if you change the name, but I believe when you do this the first time, you have an option in here to be able to uh, adjust the name. I'm not getting that now because when I click on edit, I'm going back to details. So I can't show you that. But basically you can, the first time, set the name to what you want. And I've already set my name to my camera name. And it's a custom one. So I'm always rendering now with the fast video rendering checked. SVRT radio box is the one I'm using. I'm not using the Intel Quick Video Sync. And if you don't have a processor that supports Intel Quick Video Sync, you'll probably see something else here. But I would suspect that it's going to be slower than SVRT as well. Because basically any of the video that you have that is just straight video without anything else embedded, changed, or adjusted, SVRT is going to be able to shoot through it like a rocket. Also, I should mention with SVRT, when you do this box here, you might see some other options. Anything that's in red is going to be bad. Um, just the one that's in white is your good option to go with. And then click on and click apply. There's other ways to speed up video that you can uh, set options for. You can also set under this uh, under set preferences under hardware acceleration. You can do uh, these two hardware acceleration check boxes. Also under uh, produce, you can click on the uh, reduce video blocky artifacts and reduce video noise and those are also helping getting you uh, a boost in speed there so hope you liked the video if you did and it helps you with your video rendering in cyberlink power director you can give this video a thumbs up i don't know why the folks at uh, cyberlink don't do more to direct you to these options when you're first uh, starting to use their software because you know people new to the software take forever rendering because they don't know about these options and you know hate the software and not know about this and you know cyberlink i think is shooting themselves in the foot by not doing more to impress on people to use these cool options so um also if you like the video you can share it with your friends you can subscribe to the channel and have a great day